Megan, welcome to C-Suite Up the Open. Thank you for being on the show. Well, thank you for having me. Roots uh, has recently launched a limited edition International Women's Day collaboration collection. Can you tell us a bit about that? Absolutely. So this year's theme of International Women's Day is Choose to Challenge. And so we decided to challenge some of the stereotypical things that people associate with femininity. We did a collaboration with a woman called Emma Knight, who's an author and entrepreneur. And we created a series of phrases, things like strength is feminine, freedom is feminine, confidence is feminine. Um, and the goal was really to empower women and give them support to define femininity for themselves. So we did a series of bags and t-shirts. And, and as part of the partnership, we're also supporting the Girls E-Mentorship Program, which is a program focused on young women. Um, it's girls started and it's girls founded and also supports women. Uh, and it also is really focused on helping them you know, build their careers, thinking about how they can develop themselves from an education perspective, um, thinking about how they can get support from role models who are leaders in themselves and women. So I'm going to join that mentorship program, as is Emma, and we're really excited to be able to give a portion of the proceeds of the collection back to that great charity. That's just incredible. Um, this, of course, collaboration is inspired by International Women's Day, given that we're in the month of March. UN Women has actually placed a particular focus on the challenges that women are facing during this pandemic and the disproportionate disadvantages that they're actually having. Can you tell us a little bit, maybe, uh, I mean, that initiative, obviously the collaboration sounds incredible. Switching gears to now running roots in terms of the employees. Is there anything specific that you're doing to support employees during this pandemic, but also specifically female employees? Absolutely. So I think the one thing that many of us have learned as part of the pandemic is that it's changed life as we know it. Many people are working from home. Many people who, who have the capacity to do so are doing that. Um, and other people are dealing with things like homeschooling or really balancing a lot of things in working life that they never had to balance before. And so what we're doing is we're doing, I'd say, a series of things. Um, so first and foremost, we're trying to normalize. Um, so and what I mean by that is, you know, I'm a mother myself. I have two young children and, you know, in meeting settings and other places, we're trying to say to people, have a conversation with us. It's OK not to be OK. It's OK to say I have to take a minute and, you know, go and help my kids with homeschooling. It's OK to think about your meeting structures and create flexibility in your schedule to allow yourself to balance all the challenges you have in work and life. We're really focusing our employees on the fact that it's about getting your work done, not how you get your work done. Um, and really thinking about the balance that people can obtain in their lives. I'd say the second thing is that, as you can imagine, many people have had challenges financially through the, the pandemic. Um, and as a result of that, you know, when we had to make some difficult decisions earlier on in the year, instead of doing at our head office, as an example, layoffs in specific areas, we actually did a, had, we did cuts across the board from a salary perspective. So, and it was disproportionately focused on people who are higher income earners. So I myself took very little salary last year um, from our senior management team. We, we cut salaries by 25%. Um, and it allowed us to keep all of our employees from a head office perspective, um, but just have reductions in salaries. And I would say the third thing is when we did have to do some unfortunate layoffs in places like our stores, what we try to do is we really try to retrain employees. So we try to retrain them to do things like store fulfillment of e-commerce orders or to do customer service. And as a result, we're helping them obviously build a skill set that will be essential for the future as the landscape is really changing, but also allowed us to retain more employees than we otherwise may have been able to um, as a result of things going on in the pandemic. Um, and as you know from the UN studies, I mean, women are disproportionately impacted partially because of the types of jobs that they're holding. And so we feel that the flexibility and the different changes we've made as an organization have really allowed us to retain a lot more female employees. And we've had very few people leaving us for those reasons. That, that's incredible. And, and you've got that across your employee base. Um, but I want to talk for a second about how Roots has such an impressive amount of female leadership at the C-suite level. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you're empowering women to succeed at all levels of the organization and in particular at the C-suite level? Absolutely. So I think first and foremost, it comes down to, you know, really being proactive about having a challenging conversation. I mentioned before the concept of normalization, really going out there and speaking to the employee base, you know, about what it is that they're seeking, what they're dealing with, and then thinking about how you can structure programs and things around that. Um, you know, one of the things of having a lot of female leaders in the organization is that we're obviously having those difficult conversations around the balancing, you know, your home life and your professional life. Um, and so I think that's been, you know, first and foremost, really positive. Um, I think the second thing is that you know, many of us, obviously growing up as female leaders, it's difficult to find role models um, for people who are doing jobs uh, that you are seeking to do. 
And so for our younger employees, it's been really impactful for them to see a number of women at the C-suite level. And I've had many conversations uh, with them. We're just trying to understand, you know, how we got to where we are. And so that informal mentorship program has also been really effective. Um, and I'd say the third thing is, you know, from a Roots perspective, not just female leadership, but also just generally diversity, equality, equity, inclusion is very important for us. And so we've been rethinking a lot of the ways that we do recruitments um, and thinking more about the skill sets of employees as opposed to maybe who they know or where they went to school. And so things like doing case studies to really, you know, set up level playing ground when people are coming into the organization and really thinking a lot more about the contribution from that perspective, as opposed to maybe do they culturally fit, et cetera, has been really important to us and impactful in terms of being able to hire more women to the business, um, but also really retain more women as a go forward basis too. I think the one additional thing that I would mention is that the importance of diversity and inclusion to driving really innovation and growth at a company like Roots. You know, we are an iconic Canadian brand. We represent the Canadian population. And the idea of bringing unique and diverse ideas through a company like ours is really important. Um, you can imagine, you know, when we're making clothing for very different genders, you know, people have different ages and different backgrounds and demographics. It's obviously fantastic to have those people in the company wearing and testing our products and really contributing overall to, you know, what we're working on and developing. Um, I'm a strong believer in the fact that having diverse voices in the organization makes a meaningful difference in terms of the decisions you make. And I think we found that we've made a lot of positive decisions this year as a result of having so many distinct personalities and individuals who are coming from various different backgrounds and really contributing to what we're doing as an organization, not only from the pandemic level, but uh, throughout the business decisions that we're making. So fantastic. Um, definitely a wonderful leader um, to gain the perspective and share that with both investors and those that I'm sure you're inspiring through this chat. I want to say thank you on behalf of TMX Group for, for speaking with us today and joining us at C-Suite at the Open. And we certainly hope to have you again on another episode. Thank you.